Hello everyone, this is Robert, and I want to start this video with a bit of a sad story. So I've been rearranging my workshop out here, and I finally got the Tormach into what I think is going to be its final resting position. And overnight, someone broke into my shop, didn't steal anything, but they managed to slam into the side of this little e-stop box and crush the bottom of it. It absolutely wasn't me when I was moving this the other day but it was definitely someone else. I got a police report filed and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to fix a few things that I don't like about this and relocate it. So let's do exactly that. So of course I could just go on Amazon and buy a new enclosure. They're available, they're $15. They're also available for same day delivery but there's no fun in that. I would rather spend the entire weekend over-engineering something and using as many tools out here as possible to make this exactly how I want. I do have a couple of gripes with this. The first is which it's sitting out from the machine. It's just kind of like dangling off the end and it is really easy to bump into when you move the machine or when I have this little mobile cart in front of it. So it's really easy to slam into as demonstrated by that corner. The second problem is when this door is open, you don't have access to any of the buttons that are on there, and that is a bit of a problem. The last thing that I want to change about this is I have this little button here and an LED. These are to control the PC down below that the whole machine runs off of, and it doesn't really work the way I want it to. I've had this on there for years. It was one of the first mods that I did. This is supposed to turn on and off the PC, and this is a light that shows if the PC is on. But in reality, the BIOS is set up so that it automatically turns on if there's a power cycle or if it sees network activity. So I kind of want to change how that's done with just kind of a toggle switch. So the first step in all of this is to just start mocking things up. So I'm going to grab some cardboard and some tape, and I'm going to try and figure out a better placement and configuration for this little box. There's no need to overcomplicate that first prototype or the mock-up. For here, I'm just doing a sanity check, just grabbing some cardboard, some tape, some switches and buttons that I had in my parts bin, and just kind of doing the general mock-up to see if what's in my head will end up looking appropriate on the machine. Good old cardboard and tape. So here's kind of what I'm thinking with the mock-up. It'll be angled up like that, so when you're standing, you'll have good access to everything. Clears the door, no problem. Let's see what kind of angle we're looking at. These little um, digital protractors are really handy for stuff like this. So I want it probably about like that. Yeah, 140. So I'll do 140 degrees. And that will also give the buttons enough clearance behind them because there's a lot of kind of stuff behind them, so all this needs to fit. This profile is kind of strange um, because we have this cut there, this cuts in. Thankfully, Tormach does have a 3D model. They have a step file for this whole enclosure. So I'm gonna use that to kind of model something up. But yeah, I think that looks pretty good. That'll be easy to access completely out of the way. Um, I'm gonna spend some time in SolidWorks and see what I can come up with. So after a few minutes clicking around in SolidWorks, here's what I came up with. This is just um, held in place with double stick tape for right now. There'll be some screws underneath for mounting. But yeah, pretty simple little enclosure. And here's what it looks like with the face and the buttons mounted. So I made a couple changes. You see I've got the e-stop, I've got the enable button, and then this is actually not attached. This is a little USB holder. This hole's not big enough. I need to open that up. I decided against the little switch and LED that I had on the last one because I really didn't use it that often and many, many, many reasons and ramblings I could explain later, but the Tormach actually has an outlet on the back that you can plug in. I just had the tool changer solenoid connected to this, but I can just do a three-way connect the computer and that just works out better. I don't need to control the computer from here. That can be on the main power switch on the side. So USB for a thumb drive that can go in there, the enable and the e-stop. If we pull this off, 
you can see I've got this kind of like little keyhole connector in the back. That should fit the cable glands that goes in like that. And then this little slot out the side, I can just put the USB cable in, slide it to the side, put the cable glands, nice and simple. Doesn't need to be more complicated than that. Couple of changes. So one, I don't like how it fits perfectly flush with this side. For some reason, my brain tells me that it needs to be like over here a little bit. So I'm gonna make that adjustment. Super, super easy, just need to change a sketch plane. Um, that hole was a little bit too small, the one for the cable glands. And this hole was too deep and kind of protrudes out the end. I'm not sure if you can see that. There are no mounting holes on here. And I also really don't like the color scheme. I know I'm overthinking this a little bit, but the black and this kind of steel gray, eh, I thought they'd look kind of neat together, but I don't like them. So I'm going to change that up. So I'm going to do another print, make all these little changes, and I'll get right back to you. So I've got the faceplate printed out, and while the back enclosure prints, I'm going to engrave this with the lettering and the labeling on the front. Now, the thing about laser engraving filament is it doesn't always turn out the exact same way. This is a carbon fiber PETG, doesn't really do a great job. This is the Polymaker Polylite PLA Metallic Chrome, and you can see you get some really nice contrast, looks really slick. And this is like a black pet G and all these different settings. These test cards actually come courtesy of Batch Resource Lab, a really slick YouTube channel that's doing a lot of testing with um, different colors and textures with a fiber laser on 3D printed parts. It's fantastic. Link below. So thank you so much for providing these because you really do have to test a lot of different settings to get the ones that work. So I'm going to use eh, something in here. I was going to do like shadows, you know, like a drop shadow and cross hatching. It got way too complicated. So I'm just going to do kind of a nice basic white. So I'm going to get this set up, get this engraved, and then we can put everything together. One of the cool things about a fiber laser is you can do this framing or kind of outline command, and it will just sit there and steer a very low powered laser around and you can see exactly where everything's going to go. So you can see the labeling up there on all three. Then you can see a faint outline on each one of these holes. And that will kind of allow me to align everything to make sure it's all lined up and scaled properly. And it all looks good. So let's go ahead and go pew pew. Yeah, pretty slick, huh? So here's the rear enclosure off of the printer. As you can see, the back is black. I meant to do this ring around the front because it actually looks pretty slick. Um, just that little transition there, it's kind of nice. The black on the back I didn't mean to do, but I ran out of filament, so I just figured I'd do a black back on it. Probably won't really see it. So all that's left to do is get this mounted and wired up. I just want to make sure that it's where I want it. Got some sticky tape on there. And yeah, I'm just drill in and get this thing mounted up. I'm just using two 632 machine screws to hold this whole thing in place. It should be fine. And thankfully, this is kind of in the corner on a sloped area of the enclosure, so I shouldn't have to worry too much about liquid or anything like that leaking through this. I'm also using stainless screws so they shouldn't rust. If this becomes a problem, I can just throw a little bit of caulk on there and it should be totally fine. 
I'm really glad that I took a little video ahead of time of disassembling the old wiring. Everything is nicely labeled by Tormach, but I don't know what 102 and 103 means. So I just took a little video so I know where everything goes so I can connect it, hopefully, and not have a short when I turn on the power. Uh, but I'm just connecting the e-stop and connecting the able, enable switch and making sure I remember to feed the USB through. But there is plenty of room in this box. Um, I'm learning. Over the years, I am definitely being kinder to my future self by making a lot of these enclosures a lot larger so that the wiring is not as much of a pain. Now all that's left to do is finish all the connections, screw on the faceplate, hope everything fits, and then we're done. That's all there is to it. If you're looking at this faceplate thinking that the font looks familiar, you might be right because this is the Tormach font. There are a lot of websites online that you can feed images or logos and extract out the font from it. And that's exactly what I did from this. I wanted to match as closely as possible to the font that Tormach is using. So it just kind of blends into the machine, looks appropriate, doesn't stand out. When you design something like a mod or an add-on like this, you don't want it to stick out. You want it to fit the aesthetic of the machine, and that's what I'm trying to do with this. So I tried to get as close to their font as I could. Now that everything is transferred over to the new fancy box, I don't need the old janky broken one, so I'm gonna take it off, clean up behind it, and I 3D printed these little TPU covers that will fill in those little slots in the enclosure because chips find their way out of every single little orifice. And those bottom ones have been open since I got the machine and chips just fly out of that thing all the time. So this will be nice to cover all those up. So there you go. This is how it turned out. It ended up being a little bit more complicated than I want. I spent way too much time trying crazy, weird, different things only to go to something very simple for the labeling. I cannot tell you how many different filaments I tested to try and match the Tormach because there's the base color, there's this color, there's that color, and there's a different color on the inside for the blue. I just grabbed some stuff that I had and I think this is close enough. It, it really does kind of match the machine on camera. It really looks like this and that are the same color or this or that are the same color. It's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. The e-stop, you can really slam into this thing. It is nice and solid. It is a part of the enclosure enable button, and it'll be really nice to have a USB up here. I don't use the USB that much. I mostly use the um, wireless network on this, but every so often the wireless network is a little finicky and you do need to update the firmware with the USB stick. So that'll be nice to have up here versus going down to the computer down below. I actually really like the little black detail. It's something I learned from those speakers I made earlier last year. Um, that's a nice little detail. And yeah, just overall very happy with how this works. Doesn't get in the way of the door at all. It's at a nice height. This is how the machine should have came. It looks appropriate. It looks like it was meant to be there. So that's always the sign of a good project. So anyway, thanks for watching. Check out the links down below and I will see you in the next video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.